Hello and welcome to another Franchise Hockey Manager 7 stream. My name is Adam. I'm the Community Manager of Franchise Hockey. With me as always and pictured as the hockey player on your screen is FHM producer Jeff. Say hi, Jeff. Hey, everybody. And we are back with It Lives! Cincinnati Stingers 1982, 1983 WHA season started. Jeff, the WHA is still going in the 1980s. What's going on? If you This is your first time tuning in. Yeah, uh, just to get everybody caught up on that, uh, what we've done is instead of, as Adam said, uh, when the, the NHL and the WHA or the WHA went out of business and four of its teams merged into the NHL in 1979, uh, instead of doing that, uh, we've kept it going. So there are two separate uh, major hockey leagues right now. And uh, we've what we've done is over the last two, three years that we've been doing this, uh, yeah, we're in the, yeah, we're in the third season of uh, the post uh or did we play the... I, I think it was I the think fourth, we the first season. We started, yeah, okay. I think we started in 78. Yeah, because we, we played out the last season of the uh, WHA and kept going from there. So uh, we've uh, played three more seasons and both leagues have expanded a little bit, uh, trying to compete for what markets are out there. Uh, I'll show you the WHA first. The WHA has basically just gone back into the, mar the old WHA markets that died off because, you know, conveniently we have logos for all of those and... Yeah, I want to design more. Right all of them. One, might be missing one or two uniforms, but uh, we've got that. And the NHL is in some places going, expanding early into places where they actually went into. Like there's a team in New Jersey, but it's not the former Colorado Rockies, which still exist. And they just uh, both leagues have expanded by four teams this year. Uh, the NHL going into Salt Lake City, which they never did. Uh, Dallas, uh, what was it about? 15 years early, 10, 15 years early. Hamilton, yeah. which was a, a, an expansion possibility in the 80s, but never happened. And I'm forgetting somebody who was the fourth team. Wasn't, I, mean, I put two. Uh, New Jersey. Ones. No, New Jersey was, New, Jer New Jersey was one of the first ones we did. It's Phoenix. Phoenix. Oh, yes. Yeah, right, right. And Phoenix had a WHA team, but, uh, well, say the NHL is trying to sort of cut them off and get into that market because the WHA has gone in and starting to go into the bigger markets again. LA and New York and uh, Chicago have all had expansion teams added in the last uh, three seasons. So what we're the, in the position we're in now, we're in the, we're the Cincinnati Stingers who uh, would have disappeared at the end of the last WHA season. Uh, they were a minor league team for a while after that, but, uh, and we're, we're in decent shape to begin with. Uh, they had a pretty good young team, uh, which is going to be the kind of a common theme with the WHA because they're drafting players at 17, where the NHL is still drafting them at 20. So what's tending to happen is a guy will come up at 17, 18, and will play uh, two or three seasons in the WHA. And then he they may re-sign with the WHA team, but what we're seeing is a lot of them heading over to the NHL, the most... Notable being Wayne Gretzky, who uh, was with the Indianapolis Racers for a few seasons. Show you his career stats here. But uh, eventually, after three seasons there, wound up going to the NHL and signing with Vancouver. Because there was no Of course he did. Yeah, well, why not? And had a pretty good you know, first NHL season. That's It's probably about 40 points off of what he actually did in the NHL in 81-82. But he'll take a better run at that this year. Uh, even though the Canucks are 0-2 to start the season. So uh, with all that said, let's uh, get going. Well, I will just add, since you're going on, uh, we are streaming currently on three different platforms right now. So we are on twitch.tv slash franchise hockey manager, twitch.tv slash out of the park, or sorry, OOTP developments, as well as we are streaming live on Steam. So if you have any questions, by all means, I am watching all the chats and we will gladly answer them. Max Duquette. In one of our chats says 174 points for Gretzky in 70 games. That's ridiculous. It's kind of an off season, and look what's happened here. Uh, Mario Lemieux, who had been who's playing the league, he was 16 when he was drafted. He's just barely turned 17 here, and uh, he'd gone pointless in his first two games. He's playing for Minnesota, and just had a hat trick in his third WHA game. So, I think I'm, I'm glad that are they on? Yeah, they're in the uh, opposite conference to us. So. We won't have to see too much of Mario, thankfully, because we had to play against the Gretzky-led racers for three for yeah three seasons, and that didn't go so well. 
and we oops we tied Philadelphia there looks like we got an injury uh, Gary delivery Le Riviere just day to day so swap in Andre DuPont who's getting kind of near the end of his career here we're pretty good death wise we're carrying a two 17 year olds because we can't we can sign 17 year olds but we're not allowed to send them to the minors so Bob Probert and Dan Quinn are going to spend most of the year on our roster just as the as injury fill-ins and uh, getting the occasional game when somebody else wears down. And we've also got uh, very young guys in goal too. Corrado Mikolev, who's a wing starter for a couple of years, and uh, Mike Vernon, who's only 19 at this point. Would have been playing for Calgary, the WHL in. And yeah, we destroy Chicago. 12-1 win, uh, Denny Savard with six points. Savard, who you signed for as a free agent after he left, was another WHA team, which one was it? New England. So we got to him before the NHL did. Yeah. I feel confident, Jeff, that you might be able to pull it off this season. Now, we looked about trying to re-sign some of our guys. Glad we got Chicago. But nobody would sign with us. Blowout win, eight nothing there. What were you saying? I said we did try to resign some of our guys who are going to be free agents at the end of the year, but they wouldn't sign with us at all, which was sad. And we get three games in quick succession against Chicago here and win all of them easily. That was the closest one. It was only six two, so Chicago must be pretty awful. They are one of the uh, new expansion teams. And no, that's Le Rivier. He's still hurt. Uh, ooh, Radicalio down to 14%. We got to watch that. 20 goals in two games. Good start for Jeff, says Max Ducat. Yeah, I well, would I mean, agree. He yes. helps playing an expansion team a bunch of times at the start of the year. Okay, uh, DuPont out for Le Rivier. But then he's got to go in for Radicalio. I'm not sure why Radicalio is struggling so much with his fitness. We got him playing an excessive amount. No, he's. Oh, he was on the first spot with Rotsalainen. Maybe I got to move that around. Think about it. And... Pwag in our chat as you continue to go here uh, says, "Looking forward to this year back to college hockey. Who is in the CCHA? Has eight member institutions from Bemidji, Bowling Green, Ferris." Lake Superior State, Michigan Technological University, Minnesota State, Manico, Northern Michigan University, and University of St. Thomas. Definitely always been a fan of college hockey for Pewog. Okay, Jeff, do you follow much college hockey? I, I'm curious. Uh, we'll try to keep track, but uh, it's a little hard. You don't really, we don't, not like we get it on TV here. Well, TSN in Canada has started covering some, but not a lot. Has it? Uh, well, I mean, you it? usually get at least, you usually at least get the final four and some of that. But I'm not sure how that coverage is going to work with uh, them taking over the CHL games in Canada. Probably won't have any effect. <laughs> and we lost to yeah. Savard. Uh, ooh. Well, the good news is it's, it's a day-to-day -day injury. The bad news is... Uh, Bruce testicles. That's always fun. I think I told the story a long time ago, but I do know someone who actually uh, had that very similar injury to that. So I'm just going to put took, Dan Quinn in for a game while he rests those. They took a slap shot in a major junior league hockey game in a place where you would not want it and spent uh, about three days in the hospital with their legs up in stirrups. Wow, even with the cup. Even with the cup. That stinks. <laughs> I think ouch is an understatement. Yeah, some fitness issues early on, but... Is that putting Quinn on the... That's putting him on the first line. I want to swap him and Howard Chuck around. Howard Chuck is finally... Uh, we were a little worried about him for a while because his... Our scouts were saying his potential was only... Was down to three stars. 
but now it's back up to four and a half. So whatever happened, we got them straightened out. All right. Would like one of the goalies to improve and um, five two loss in New England. Okay, so far it is better now. Now, uh, we don't have our number one goalie signed, but are we worried with Ron Hextall coming? Let me have a look here. Oh, yeah, Mikolev is... Wow, he's super cheap. I didn't realize we had him signed so cheaply. Uh, I think we better sign him just for... I mean, he may wind up in the minors next year. If Hextall and uh, Vernon suddenly jump surge developmentally, but uh, let's see what he wants. Yeah, wants next to nothing. So sure, we'll keep him happy if he's you know be happy to have the uh, contract uh, signed too. Well, we're also missing a lot of guys, which won't help. I uh, wonder what. I don't think Savard is willing to talk to us, is he? No, nope, neither is Curry. Oh, man. Okay, I think we better get this done this year, then. Yes, we better. Pressure is on. Okay. Should be an easy win against Chicago, and it is. 8 nothing win. Denny Savard. Uh, eight points against Chicago. Now, uh, we talk about a lot of different things here, but I don't know how much time we spent talking about the Chicago Cougars. Mika left sign, by the way. Excellent. Don't think we really now, talk much about them. Well, they were a WHA team playing up until 76? Yeah, they only had right. uh, two, three seasons, I think. Yeah. But the best part about them was the arena they played in. Was that the Rosemont Horizon, or were they somewhere else? Uh, I got to think back. Or is that the one that um, put them in here? I've got them... Uh... Yeah, no, they're at the International Amphitheater and the Randhurst. Yeah, that's their... Oops, I screwed something up on the uh, capacity for them when I was editing that. Apparently, they've got a 97,000-seat stadium. <laughs> That's wrong. A 90,000-seat stadium? Wow, a lot of people going to watch games. Well, let's we'll say they're playing at, at Soldier Field. Ah. A little uh, chilly out. A quick but, Google. Uh, Apparently, somebody actually co-opted the Chicago Cougar jerseys and is using them. As a Chicago Cougars team. At what level? They took the uh, jerseys from the 70s? It's, yeah, pretty much. Okay. It looks like it's uh, all development for, yeah, kind of 16, 17-year-olds. Uh, okay. But they're, yeah, got Chicago same again, Another 6-2 easy win. What's their... Wait, oh. 72 yeah. to 75, nailed it. Okay, so the reason why I was going to talk about this was because um, the Cougars played in this this terrible old arena, which by all accounts was uh, basically like uh, you would walk in there and it would just be hovering in smoke all the time from people smoking cigarettes. But uh, the they had a, the arena had a standing contract with a. What was it? Was it a circus, I think, maybe? Or something like that, that immediately always came into the arena at a particular time of year. Oh, yeah. Okay. Which, well, that was pretty common back then, actually. Yes, but what happened was they refused to change it when the Cougars got into the playoffs. And so it was unavailable for the second round of one of them. And we got a development report. Uh, Kevin Deneen coming along nicely too. Quinn, our other underage guy. So yeah, they ended up playing at a public skating rink that held 2,000 people. And the only guys going downhill are the ones who are expected and the board should be pretty happy. And I'm going to take a look at our job security and I think, yeah, that is fine. Solidly in the blue there. But the best part was... Uh, after they went went away, the this uh, over Minnesota. circus or whatever it was 
actually doing a quick look at apparently it was Peter Pan. Peter Pan with Olympic gymnast Kathy Rigby in the title role. Um, they dismantled <laughs> dismantled the cooling equipment in the arena so they couldn't even put the ice back in when the Cougars played in the finals against the Arrows in 73-74. And so they had to play the finals in a 2,000-seat little arena. And we lose to the uh, LA Sharks, Spanish team. That's not good. Yeah, I mean, there was, it, it doesn't happen as much now, but I remember the Leafs one year had to uh, rebook their first playoff series because uh, they couldn't, they had conflicting dates because uh, Harold Ballard had booked a rock concert into the stadium the first week of the playoff, into the Maple Leaf Gardens the first week of the playoffs, which kind of shows you how much faith he had in his team. The Brandon Wheat Kings used to have to go to Winnipeg at, for at least one series, usually in the first round of the playoffs or so, to, because uh, it was the winter fair. Was it playoffs or was it still regular season? Must have been regular season because that's you wouldn't be having a winter fair in March, I would hope. Well, it's Manitoba. Then, then, then again, it's not like the weather's going to be any different. <laughs> Okay, 4-2 uh, win. We'll just play this game against Indianapolis. Winter Fair is hard, held from March 28th to April 2nd-ish. The Royal and Winter, we winter lose Fair. 6-5 in overtime. Paul Gagne with a uh, hat trick for Indianapolis. But uh, the good news is, 18 games in, we are on top of the Central Division and you know, second overall in the league. Oh, wow, look at Birmingham. Birmingham for a few years had a really scary group of defensemen, uh, but they, they trimmed that down a little bit. I think they had, what, Coffey, Bork, Hartsburg, and Rob Ramage. And they're down to just Coffey and Ramage, you know, Coffey and Hartsburg now, but still they've got a pretty good there. They've still got Michelle Goulet, who was uh, with them when this game started. Uh, he was playing in Birmingham at 18. And Dale Hunter, another guy who was underage. So they've kept a couple of their key underage guys. Rick Vive, same story there. And haven't really... Well, you know, Dave Schultz, uh, the hammer's still playing. Not of often, course. but uh, he's had one fight this year, looks like. Uh, they also That's have Dino Cicerelli, game. but uh, he's out to... Wow, look at that. 42 points in 14 games for Cicerelli. No wonder they're 14 and 15 and 1. Wow. Yeah, the Birmingham guy's just running away with the scoring lead, although we've got Savard and Curry in the top 10. Just out of curiosity, let's see what's going on in the NHL. And uh, Canucks, after opening 0-2, have turned that around. And Gretzky's leading the league in scoring on track for a little above 180 points. And uh, Montreal. Montreal is... They looked like they were starting to lose strength there, but uh, after their, you know, the big the dynasty teams from the 80s were going downhill, but they seem to have bounced back. Uh, even though Bob Ganey and Guy Lapointe are both hurt, but suddenly Lafleur seems to be propelling them along. So, and we're keeping an eye on anything interesting going on there. Looks like Robbie fatorik has got a minor injury. Maybe ready by the time we play the next game, or... Apparently not. So Dan Quinn gets to go back in. Place for Torek with Howard Chuck and put Quinn into Howard Chuck's spot. And 7 3 win over Ottawa. And Howard Chuck gets a couple of points on the first line. All right, good. And hopefully. Torek is almost ready to come back. Uh, he's, well, not quite ready. We'll give, uh, going to swap DuPont out for, uh, Nyrup is Nyrup is. Run down a little and a 5-2 win over New England. Yari Curry with a hat trick. Uh, Fatoric's still not quite ready. And I 
think I want Naira back in. Why is Radicalia running down so fast? Oh, I was going to take a look at that. i got to check the lines when he's healthy again. Or when he's... After this, at least. 7-3 win over Miami. And we continue to roll on. Having a pretty good year so far. And, uh, great. Naira absurd. Oh, not good. Fractured fibula. Two or three months. Whoops. I'm going to have to shuffle that around, uh... Okay, Nairop's got to go to the injured list. And I am going to have to bring up somebody. Let's see, we got an 18-year-old Oaf Samuelson and a pretty good uh, group of defensemen on the farm. Nyland and Candanico too, but uh, Nyland's at one star, so is Samuelson, so it'll be Samuelson that comes up. Right. So we have some hope for next year. Even if we lose some guys. Yeah. It's just a lot of scoring that's potentially leaving in the off season. I should try and resign Radicalio because Oh boy. Well four years, but he wants a no movement clause. I'm gonna take first two years a little, see if I can get a bit of money back. But yeah, and he's gonna go for that, I think. Yeah, Radicalio signs the extension. So the yeah, the only concerns left are well, wow, we got Kevin Nadine, we gotta get him. Yeah, he's gonna go cheaply, so and doesn't want any uh, no trade clauses, so that's fine. Okay, and Denine signs. We're good there. Now, rebuilding the lines. I'm going to swap Brickley and Radicalio around. Just because Radicalio seems to be wearing down too much. With that first line or first pair of minutes. And yeah, okay, he'll be on the uh, power play. I think we're good there. And an easy 8 2 win over Ottawa. And Fatoric should be healthy now. gonna fix some of these guys here in position so they don't get moved around when I shuffle the lines. Yeah, that's good. Sixteen three and one to start the season and we go up to seventeen three and one. That's the closest Chicago's played us so far. Five three win. Gotta have a look at that. I haven't checked our scoring in particular our goalies yet uh, so Savard running away with the uh, well not running away with it but having a great year uh, Savard 45 points in 21 games and Rutzelein and Curry are right behind him uh, just wish those guys weren't two, two thirds of those guys weren't leaving the offseason Gardner lagging a little bit but still production up from last year ah, Patrick Sundstrom is really starting to take off now oh, that's good had a couple of slow seasons. Uh, Brent Ashton, also nearly a point a game. Lots of uh, scoring depth here. Fatoric, because he missed a few games. It's a little farther down, but he's still a point a game. Uh, Howard check not really producing, but I don't think we're giving him much playing time. He's on the third or fourth line. And what's going on in goal? Oh, Mikulov have actually playing pretty well. 2.66 goals against average, and the well, save percentage is only 883, but that's respectable for this era. And Verna not doing too badly either. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's one of those things you got to remember. 1980s goalies look like stick figures compared to guys now. You know, so I was looking at Reddit earlier and somebody had posted a picture of Tommy Soderstrom from the uh, 90s. And even then he looks a little ridiculous with the big uh, cage helmet. Ouch, 6-1 lost to Indianapolis. So we're having trouble with them and that's not good because they're the guys we're going to have to get by in our division. And somebody's hurt. Rick Lee is just day to day with Nasha and oh, Gartner is too. Well, Samuelson will get a game. Gartner, oh, strained abdominal two to three weeks. So, uh, going to have to throw Probert in and rejuggle the lines because he's going on the fourth line. Sunstrom goes up to the first. And we're playing Philadelphia, who is an expansion there. No, this they're an expansion team too. So it's an easy eight to one win despite the injury problems, and Savard gets uh, another four points. So Savard and Curry are going to get nice contracts in the NHL next year. Not much we can do about that, unfortunately. You can cheat, Jeff, just like you've cheat? done before. Cheat? I wouldn't cheat. You've done it before. And Quebec you makes us 4 2 behind Kelly Kizio's three points. You even did it in this stream. What? When did I do that? Oh, no, that was that was cheating, though, to fix something that, uh, well, I screwed up that shouldn't have happened. Oh, so it's still cheating then, isn't it? Ah, uh, technically. <laughs> you are technically correct. The best, best kind. kind of cor correct. a <laughs> <laughs> uh, big win, 11-3 over Houston, who is not an expansion team. They're just apparently bad. How are they doing this year? Oh, 9-14, so they're the one of the... F oh, New England's not doing so hot. The sort of original... Uh, was it eight WHA teams that we were down to? Yeah. No, six, seven. Seven teams. Uh, the in first 78 79 because it yeah, was had seven and it dropped down to six when Indianapolis uh, collapsed yep. early in the season. But uh, Cincinnati the and teams, the Jets are still fine. Cincinnati and the Toros, Birmingham yep. 23. Oh, I just saw they were, they looks like they lost one 24 and two. They were 20 or 23 and two. They were 23 and one. No, 24 and two. They were 24 and one. Well, who beat them? Uh, Winnipeg 6-5, just barely. Don't think we've got all 1980 scores. Uh, Savard creeping up on the scoring leaders as the Birmingham guys slow down a little. Okay, Lee is back. Samuelson goes out. Gonna swap Probert out for Quinn because Quinn can play the wing as well. Yeah, that looks fine. Fitness uh, looking a little better now that we were struggling with it early in the season. And Curry gets four assists as we beat up the expansion LA team. Scouting update. Uh, yeah, not much in the way of decent free agents. I am shocked. Mostly European guys. A couple of guys who played one season in WHA and got... Cast off. Uh. Although looking, there is a couple of guys here who are interesting, but granted, I haven't moved off from early on in the season. If they are still available. And day three win over Ottawa. Five points for Savard. Let me take a look at the free agent list. Filter it down to just the signable guys. Okay, Brian Scrudelin's there. He's 19, looks like Miami let him go. 
Yeah, Mike Eagles was still there in my game, but he might have signed. A lot of 17-year-olds. We can't afford to sign a 17-year-old because we would have to play them. No, I was looking by ability, down. not by potential. I'm just getting one and a half star guys. Scrooland is by far the best. Eagles is there, but not really an improvement on anything we have. No, but he's good depth, and if we get him signed to a decent contract, if he turns into a three star guy, I am gonna. I'm not gonna go for him, but I am gonna try and sign uh, Scrooland. Put him on a six year deal and throw him in the minors. <laughs> And Scrutal does sign, but I can't do anything yet, so I'm going to have to send him down to the minor league team, which is eerie for us. And still doing good with board confidence. Another development report. Uh, a lot of only single improvements for most of our older guys. It's not great. You'd like to see a little bit more. Tony Granato is still stuck at half a star in the minors. Hextall improving. Good. And oh, great. Rodda Kelly, the guy we just gave a contract, is starting to go downhill. Um, Paul Gagne, who had a hat trick against us early in the season, uh, tore his UCL and is gone for the year, it looks like. So that will help because he's on Indianapolis. And we play them. Go with Mika Leff and goal on that one. And a 7 to 4 loss. Mike Bullard, not the talk show host, uh, five points. Brian Prop, four. Uh, we have to figure out a way to get by those guys. And now Howard checks hurt. Strained foot one to two weeks. So he goes out. Probert goes back in. We're going to have a couple of 17 year olds on the fourth line with, I think, Denise 19. A very young fourth line. That's okay. Now, fortunately, we've got Ottawa, an expansion team, up for their first game, and we just narrowly get a win out of that, three to two. Outshot him pretty handily, though. Andre Dupont gets his first of the season. I think this was his, was his last year in the NHL. Uh, he was finishing up with Quebec at this point. Okay, back in Indianapolis again. Uh, let's go with uh, Mikulev and goal. Another 4-2 loss. Patrick Sundstrom was a second star at least. And, oh, great, we lost to Quant now. That's oh, no. Ruptured tendon in his foot. So there goes our spare defenseman for two or three months it looks like how are the others doing oh uh, Rolf Edberg who uh, did we I don't remember signing him how did we all oh, right we trade uh, we traded Darren Pang to Chicago for him he's almost back Nyrup's another one to two months, so I'm going to have to call up another defenseman to be the seventh guy. That's going to have to be Gary Nyland, I think. So he'll finally get into some games for us. Excellent. Okay. But the injury is definitely starting to hurt, and Nyland needs a number. Pwag asked in the chat, have we heard much about the Coyotes moving 22-23 where? They actually just submitted a bid for an arena in Tempe, I think I saw. Yeah, sounds like they're going to stick in Arizona, but again, got to deal with that mess at what, every four or five years or so, apparently? Yeah, there was, there was something about Tempe, I'm pretty sure. Okay, got a few days off here, and I think that should help with the injuries. 
Okay, Gardner is healthy again. That's good. Oh, just time for Probert to get hurt. But uh, Probert is only day to day with a sore hip. Oh, and we're going to have to send somebody down because Rolf Edberg is healthy. But he's only one star, so he goes down. And okay, top line is back together. Radicalio hasn't had the fitness problem since we moved him off the top pair. He's still a little bit behind, but not too badly. No, that's good. And New England for our first game back. And 6-4 win over an established team. That's good. And now we've got an easy game against an expansion team. Put Vernon, the rookie, back up in. He's actually a little hotter than Mikulev. And we get a 6-3 win. I actually got outshot in that one, so Vernon had a pretty good game. And Brent Ashton with four points to lead us. Robert looks like he's nearly healthy again. And we got another game against New England. Oh, and Howard Chuck as well. Robert ready to go back in, but we don't need him yet. And see if we can beat New England again. You have 4 4 tie. Curry with three points for us. Don Bopre and goal for. Oh no. no. Bopre and goal for New England, but. Well, that's not good. Denny Savard, torn thigh muscle, three to four months. Hmm. It's a good thing we've got a lot of def uh, send depth at center. Yes. So Howard Chuck will finally get his chance to uh, get some real playing time here. And I think we may need to, yeah, uh, yeah, Scrudland, who we just signed and has apparently been doing pretty well in the minors, is going to have to get the call up to fill in for him, at least until Howard Chuck's back. Oh, Good yeah, he wants him. to put uh, Brent Sutter on the first line. I'll give it a try. I thought it would have moved up for Torek. Okay, do we have everybody? No, Power Chuck is still day to day. Okay, oh, great. It's Indianapolis, too. Let's see how we do. Oh, wow, 6 3 win. All right, I like it. Rutzelainen leading the way with uh, three points, although they outshot us pretty handily. Mikulev kept us in that one. Craig Ludwig of Minnesota getting suspended. And we are almost at the halfway point of the season. It's uh, I think I left it on 79 games. Oh, we got Indianapolis again. Mikulev is a little worn out, so we're going to throw Vernon in against him this time. And narrow 4-3 loss. I'll chop pretty badly again, so Vernon can't really blame that on him. And we are almost, uh, just, yeah, just past Christmas now, so we will get the end of the year uh, player poll, which is always interesting to look at. And Howard Chuck is ready just in time for the play the last game, I think, of calendar 1982. Yeah, uh, Pewag, there's, there's been something since then, but he's posting about the possibility of Houston for Arizona. I, the NHL really doesn't want to abandon that TV market. Yep. So they're going to do every, and that's always been the reason why they've stayed there. So they're going to keep, their best to trying to fight there. Just people who think it might use in one of the other channels, Adams. We've got uh, we're broadcasting on Steam and uh, the FHM Twitch channel as well as the regular OTP one. Yeah. So, while Houston could possibly be, there's also Kansas City 
and I mean Quebec's there, but they're not going to Quebec. It's not happening. Quebec is too convenient to keep around as a threat. Anybody wants to move their franchise, uh, or if they've got a inconvenient landlord, or it's the city and the state or province won't buy a new arena, they threaten to move to Quebec. Also, I think Jeffrey Molson would be pretty upset if they moved, which is also a bit of an issue too. I would imagine. What am I missing? One, two, three, four. I got six defensemen to rest. Six, seven. Why am I coming up as 19 out of 20 dress? 9, 10, 3, 6, 9, 12 forwards. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Oh, 5 defensemen, that's why. Oh, okay, there we go. Radicali on leg got hurt. Uh, so, really running low on defensemen here. Kelly Davis, who's like our number 10 guy, is going to have to play a game. And and the other thing with Houston, too, is they don't even have an AHL team anymore. Which might be a good thing, but also it's not a good thing. Oh, man. And I run out of players on the active roster. So somebody on the injured list. You got so many guys. But the only guys, I've, the injured guys I've got are two of my defensemen who are just out day to day. No, what I'm going to do instead, Davis goes back down. Dress Probert, and he will play the third defensive pair, but he will not get a lot of minutes. Hopefully we only didn't need to do that for one game and it's only Ottawa, so we might be able to get by with it. Fingers crossed. 3-2 win. We just barely do. How did Probert do on D? Five minutes played now. Didn't embarrass himself. Game rating in the 50s. Oh, come on. Now all Samuelson gets hurt. And he's out one to two weeks, so I really do have to send him to put him on the injured list. All the injuries are coming in. Which at least let me, lets me call Davis up properly and can take Probert out of, uh, might as well get around to the game, see how if we get anybody back before then. Okay, Ottawa again at least, so Let's see if we can squeak by with another wow that's wait probert i thought i took him under the lineup apparently not one two three four oh yeah and i'm still a defenseman short so now nope he is going to have to play again oh man gary nyland who i wasn't even expecting to play this year is going to get first line minutes or first pair of minutes dun, dun, dun. Yet we still win against Expansion Ottawa and Gary Nyland with a goal and assist for the first star. Excellent. Nice to see uh, if his development can get going again. And the annual player poll at the end of the year. Uh, Rutzleinen is the best skater in the league, apparently. Dave Schultz, nice. uh, despite... Oh, no, he's actually playing a little bit and fighting some, so he's still the toughest player in the league at 33. And Steve Eiserman, 17-year-old Steve Eiserman, is already the smartest player in the league. To be fair, I don't think I'd want to fight uh, him at any age, though. I think he was, yeah, he was out of hockey. But this, I'm trying to remember if he was, he was actually the commissioner of the ACHL, which was basically the what the ECHL was in the early 80s. I think he was actually the league commissioner for a couple of seasons, or maybe it was only one. Uh, tell me we've got some injured guys coming back soon. Samuelson knows he really has to one to two weeks. So we've lost to Pont and Nyrup, two regular defensemen. We're still waiting for something to happen with uh, Radicelio and Lee. 
and fortunately we keep playing Ottawa. This is an unbalanced schedule. We're playing more against teams in our own division, and it's another 6-3 win. And that is the end of 1983, 1982, rather. Development report. Uh, Quinn, okay, well, at least playing time is helping Samuelson a little bit. He's coming up. And Dupont, yeah. Now pretty much all the older guys headed downhill. Still no movement on Radicelli and Lee. Blurred vision and the flu. Getting close to the, uh, I don't know, still got about 10 15 minutes left. So we've slipped behind Indianapolis, but I think we can claw that lead back. Or, yeah, Denny Savard falling out of the top 10 with that injury. Uh, and Curry, I guess, is slowing with its line and slowed down a bit without hemping him around. And Michelle Goulet leading the league. And over in the NHL, I think we have Ignison Gretzky. He's got 96 points in 46 games. Canucks leading the Patrick division. And the expansion team's uh, doing about as... Oh, wow, Utah is actually in the middle of the Patrick. Kind of a surprise. Uh, Grant Mulvey, Marion Stesny, is that Jim Watson? Yeah, it's Jim Watson. Is their captain? Really looks like a pretty awful team, but uh, the quality of play has been going downhill a little bit as we've added so many expansion teams. And seeing guys who uh, would have gone, would have declined by this point or wouldn't have even have been in the league, uh, getting their careers extended or getting to play in the NHL. And Jacques Lemaire was retired for, I think, about three years at this point. And he's still in the top ten in assists. Oh, God, we got Birmingham. <laughs> Not what I wanted to see with, yeah, still got the injury problems and still having to play Probert on defense. Oh, just Robert. keep it to single figures, please. No, it's only a 5-3 loss. It's not too embarrassing. That's actually pretty darn good, all things considered. p -Wog's dropping more news that apparent, apparently I missed from last month about Rod the Kelly Red Wings. finally healthy enough to play, at least. Updating their ECHL affiliate. Okay, one of, yeah, I want to put Sutter back at center, first line center, so we'll let him do that. And oh wow, we got shut up by San Diego, who was a uh, expansion team last year. So maybe we shouldn't have done that. Actually, maybe they, no, they were two years ago. I think uh, I just remember them being terrible. And oh wow, now they're at five hundred. So they've really let me check their history to see how long ago it was. Yeah, pretty good. Improvement: six wins in their first season, sixteen in their second, and they're already at twenty-four halfway through the third. Yeah, just doubling every year. Okay, finally getting guys healthy again. Although Radicelli was conditioning problems, still a bit of an issue. I'm wondering who I should should I really be going with. Sutter on the first line, or should I be trying Howard Chuck up there? I think Throw I'm gonna, Howard Chuck up. Yeah, I'm going to try it. That does bump the torque down to the third, though. Three easy, three, easy three, nothing win over Chicago. Trading deadline must be, yeah, February 14th or about a month out, so we'll probably get to that next stream. Oh, and Sam, okay, we're starting to get guys back healthy again. Oh, just in time for Le Riviere to get hurt. Samuelson's day-to-day, -day, so we'll be able to bring him back soon and send down some of the minor league defensemen we're using.
going to swap Quinn in for one game. He's been sitting for a little, quite a while. Now it is against Indianapolis, though, so... Ouch, 7-3 loss. With all the injuries, we just don't have the talent to compete with them. Okay, La Riviere is back healthy again. Only at 80%, but good enough is... No, Samuelson is still day-to-day, -day, so... Can take Davis out and go with something slightly better on D. Nyland's still getting a ton of playing time. Fortunately, it's only Chicago. And it's a 7-1 win, despite all the... Uh, injuries that we still have and it looks like Samuelson is almost back and Samuelson is healthy so he goes to the active roster now who goes down well, it looks like we've lost Doug Smale for a couple of days with a sore foot Samuelson probably goes into the lineup for Nyland and Davis gets sent down. And with the pair, oh no, I don't, uh, don't want to wear down Rodicelio, but I've just got nobody good enough, nobody else good enough to play in the first line. First pair, rather. And it's Indianapolis again, and they beat us 3-1 to one this time. And it looks like we outshot them there, so at least we're slightly competitive with them, but I'm still wondering how we get by those guys in the playoffs. And another series against Indianapolis. I think we're, yeah, everybody's fitness is relatively high. Nikolev played well in that last game, so I'll give him another one. And we finally get a 5-4 win against them. Well, uh, getting some, some wins. Edmund Quebec making a trade. Uh, Quebec's first rounder next year for Tom Songen. Doesn't seem like a great trade for Quebec. I'll keep in mind that the picks you're making are and those guys aren't going to turn into decent players for another two, three seasons because we're taking them so young. At least in most cases. Oh, that reminds me. How is... Whoops, wrong team. How is Mario doing? He is up to three stars already. Just slightly over 17 and 40 points in 49 games. So this is basically his equivalent of that... Uh, the said Gretzky 78-79 year <laughs> in the, the WHA. And he's going to be scary in another season or two. Well, I guess, yeah, next year would be 83-84, his first NHL season. So he's probably going to be pretty bad next year, actually. Bad to play against. Trying to find these guys with longer-term deals. And another win against Indianapolis, 4-2 this time. Are we catching up to them? Oh, Quinn got hurt, but... And I will take any excuse I get to be able to put one of the 17-year-olds on the injured list. Because that lets me call up a... Well, if I had a better player, I guess it would let me call one up, but... Uh, yeah, one star, one star. Time to go sign somebody. No, I'll call up Gilles Billado. Throw the goon in for a few games. Still might be time to sign somebody else. Would you be willing to sign a 17 year old? Uh, it doesn't work because I, I would have three, I've already got two 17 year olds in the lineup. 
And I would have to dress one of them every game at once they were healthy. That's what I'm saying. It would have to be somebody like Mario who's going to be really productive as a 17-year-old. And there's not anybody like that out there, I don't think. Okay, versus Houston. And we get shut out by the struggling Houston Arrows, 3-0. No, though they've got actually, I think Houston, if I remember right. No, but yeah, you could got sign two camp. Of the Islanders dynasty goaltending, uh, Roland Melanson and Kelly Rudy are the uh, Houston goalies. I can sign who? Cam Neely and just force him into the lineup. Oh, yeah, he is out there, but yeah, 17. But you know what? He's you could sign him to it. 10-year deal. But then I've got to give him playing time this year, and he's going to be terrible, and uh, we're trying to win this year. You're halfway through the season if you get him to do a 10-year deal. Okay, back in Indianapolis, and it's a wow, 6-6 tie, but it looks like we changed goalies at some point. What happened there? 2-1 in the first period for them. 3-1, then we score four goals to get ahead. Casper gets a late one. Oh, back and forth. Just just showing this out there. Cam Neely signs a 10-year deal for 140000 a year. I'm going to have to pass. 10 years of Cam Neely? Come on. Problem is, ten years. It's the first one. You're already half the season over. But I would have to play him in the playoffs too. How is the injured list looking? Okay, starting to get guys close to coming back. Nairup is only a couple of weeks out. DuPont still one to two months and Savard. Hopefully we get him back by the playoffs. Because I don't think we're going to run down Indianapolis here. And what if you did? Well, wouldn't make much of a difference. We just get home ice in the playoffs because I think we play them in the first round. 5-4 well, overtime loss against them. So at least we're Playing competitive with them now, and that's what Savard out. Ah, the Oilers and uh, New York Raiders make the trade. John Paddock. Jets coach. Headed from Edmonton to uh, the Raiders. Yep. For uh, former U.S. Olympian Rob McClanahan. Former Ottawa coach, too, I guess. I think that was his last team. And a rare game against Edmonton. And they beat us in overtime. And we do not get a point for that because there's no shootout here and no overtime. Uh, well, you don't get a point for overtime losses either. Because that's the way it should be. And there we go. They Maybe. wind up here just one last development report. Uh, oh, Probert improving, at least with the playing time we gave him. Samuelson up a bit too. And Gordon. Oh, Gordon is only 20. I thought he was older than that. Had a pretty decent rookie year. Play this last game against Ottawa. I don't think we have. No, we haven't got anybody that we can bring put back in yet. But should be able to end this on a winning note. And we do a 6 1 win. Gartner with four points. And we'll just take a look at the board conference update. The uh, season is. Proceeded promisingly, although he's not happy because we've only been playing about 500 in the last uh, month or so. How is our job security? Still pretty solid. 
and fans are reasonably happy and it's the happiest I've seen them team chemistry pretty good too and just taking a very quick look at the stats before we go Curry 93 points in 55 games that's gonna suck having to replace that although Patrick Sundstrom is coming along nicely 63 points so far Howard Chuck still not scoring yet yeah well the Birmingham guys Cicerelli at 119 points already 55 games in the season They've got, well, four guys over 100. And Coffee's actually going to take a run at the uh, league scoring lead. And over to the NHL, Gretzky way out in front. Although Lafleur is giving him a bit of a race. He's only a dozen point back, points back, I guess. Yeah, Lafleur hasn't had the injuries that he had uh, in real life at this point. I think he stayed relatively healthy if I'm... Yeah, really hasn't missed any games in the last, well, just a handful in the last three, four seasons. So he's still productive for Montreal. Montreal isn't uh, slowing down much, 42, 8, and 4. So they may be in a position to take the cup back. And the Atlanta Flames, who uh, in a huge upset won the cup last year, are in danger of missing the playoffs. And Utah still, uh, they, they dropped down to the fourth, but surprisingly good season from them. Their expansion year. And our expansion team saw Chicago 544-2. L.A. reasonably competitive. And Minnesota with Mario not doing that badly. And Philadelphia also doing okay too. So it's only Chicago that's fallen. That's really having trouble. You know, decent goaltending, John Garrett and Jim Craig. But, yeah, not much up front yet. And, wow, the D is, that's looking like our D, uh, when we had injuries only, that's the best they can do, I think. Oh, no, Baxter is hurt. I know it's Kim Claxton as well, both long-term injuries. So that's probably why they, would, they wouldn't be quite that bad without the injuries. But uh, anything else I want to look at here? Quick check on the goalies. Make left still playing well. Decent numbers. We're going to doing okay too. And he's in the top eight league. Okay, I think we can wind it up here, Adam. Yeah, all right. Well, thank you very much for tuning in to another Franchise Hockey Manager stream. We typically stream every Wednesday night at 10 p.m. Eastern on twitch.tv slash OOTP developments as well as twitch.tv slash franchise hockey manager. You can also find all of our streams archived on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash OOTP developments as well. Of course, you can come on down to and find us on our social media like facebook.com slash franchise hockey manager on Twitter. We're at franchise hockey. You can also find a link to our official discord in our Twitter bio. And, of course, you can come on down to our official website, which is ootpdevelopments.com. Click on the community button in the type, top right-hand corner, which will bring you to your official forums. We can come talk about Franchise Hockey Manager, Out of the Park Baseball, Perfect Team, Go, or anything else you wish to discuss. Jeff? Did I miss anything? Don't think so. Uh, can't give, We're very close to being able to give you news about FHM8. Uh, going to be as soon as I finish up here I'm actually going to be looking at a new build of it uh, in a second and oh, you want me to just start going through things start yelling them out here yeah at the end? I'd rather you didn't <laughs> no and, okay no we'll uh we'll have some news on that pretty soon we're just gonna get the, the beta testing is about to start too so we'll be going on that and we'll be able to once that's going we'll be able to do screenshots and we can get our uh, trailer set up and everything and start telling you what's going to be in that but looking in pretty good shape at this point uh, got a few things i gotta do just the usual housekeeping stuff just gets stupidly busy this time of year but we will get uh, through that and we will what are you gonna say i was gonna say p -Wog's asking for just one thing in the chat just one thing can, can you confirm that the wha will be playable the wha is already playable <laughs>
Well, it will be continue to be playable in FHM eight. There you go, Pwog. Now uh, you know. Okay, I'll, I'll give you a hint of something. Uh, the looking if I look at the uh, free agent center right now, you'll notice if I look at the young end of it, uh, all these guys are just sitting there as free agents. Uh, that will be different in FHM eight. I'll say that much. Those guys da, won't da, be just free agents anymore. Da. I will let you figure right. out why that is. But uh, thanks for coming out. We will be back next week with Adam's uh, San Jose Sharks stream under after the yet another playoff failure. I don't think it was a failure. We we no. lost to the Stanley yeah, Cup champions. Yeah, we, yeah, we did. We did. And, and we we, we them beat them the most games of else could. Exactly. I think that's a successful season. But we'll be back again next week under the new owner, though, who doesn't seem to like you at all. That is true. So we'll see how long that lasts. But uh, thanks for coming out, everybody, and uh, we will be back at you next week.